everybody, Bam Collectibles here, back for another statue on but, okay, we're not doing statues today. Today, we are diving into some meaty topics about hero statues versus anime statues. Today, I have my good friend Gemmin Collectibles on to talk about it. What's going on, Bam, and all the Bamanites out there? You know what's funny? We've been talking about doing this video since before we both hit 100,000 subscribers, and now we're finally doing it. Yeah, man, it's amazing to be able to carve out the time and be able to discuss this with you today. So let's jump right into the first topic. First thing we're going to do is talk about scale differences. Us hero and comic book statue collectors, we love the quarter scale, the one fourth scale statue, which is one fourth the size of a human being. We also like the one third scale, but those big statues. Now over here in the anime world, pretty much we stick to around one sixth to one eighth scale. And we have this odd one seventh scale as well. Now I got my first quarter scale piece this year, and I have to say it's an oddball. It blew me away but it's an oddball it doesn't really fit in my collection because everything is around one six to one eight now bam why do you think that is is it because the anime statues like to incorporate more of their powers or more of the background now gem that leads me directly into point number two which is poses a lot of anime statues they focus on the actual character's abilities sometimes even more than the character so there's a large diorama that's built up around the character that really showcases whatever their capabilities are yeah, that's true. With comic book characters, we have a lot of what you call museum poses or what I like to call Captain Morgan pose where they got one foot up on like a barrel or a rock. I think as time has gone by and we have more technology and digital sculpting, we started to see more dynamic comic book pieces. But yeah, man, there is definitely a large museum scale market out there for the comic book statues. Yeah, you know, now that I think about it with anime statues, the, the longer it grows and the more it evolves, I do see a lot more museum poses. So it's kind of like we're going backwards while, you know, as the digital sculpting gets more evolved, you're getting more dynamic. You know, I'm seeing statues now where we're actually starting to focus more on the character than the actual abilities come out. Well, that's interesting. I didn't really know that because I did always like how anime statues have these big waves of different materials. And that's going to be the third topic here. The different material that you guys use in those statues, you have those big energy blasts that are made out of translucent resin. Now we dabble with that, but I feel like that's really prominent in the anime statue world. Man, you got that right. If you look behind me, it looks like a freaking Christmas tree. With the amount of translucent resin that these statue includes, it just begs and asks for LEDs to light them up and just bring more life and character to the overall statue. You. Now, when it comes to the comic book guys, though, I do notice that we utilize mixed media more often with fabrics and leathers and such. With the anime statues, it's typically all sculpted, right? Yeah, you know, honestly, now that you mention it, like we, we don't have ever cloth or fabric or real material baked into it. Every once in a while, we'll get a statue where they put some texturing on the character or their outfit. And even then, I, I touch it, I'm kind of weirded out by it because I don't normally have that amount of detail packed into an anime piece. And speaking of extra features and materials, have you seen that Sume Vegeta that not only has the flashing lights with the LEDs, but the sound effects? Oh man, I have to say, Sume Vegeta is one of those statues that is really ahead of its time. Now, when I think of features and the future of statue collecting, I can really see them start to implement things like LED lights, kind of living actual LEDs where they have, I think it's like a circuit board that will make it do a lot of different features. And then also different sounds that can really bring to life maybe a moment, a scene, an emotion in a statue. Yeah, I can imagine like an X-Men diorama with da -na 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 playing when you press a button or something like that. Honestly, Jim, I have no idea why they haven't come up with features like that in statues where we're playing either the opening song for some of these franchises we love or maybe some battle music that really brings to life an actual scene or character. I'm sure it's something in the future or maybe it's just extra licensing costs that I have to pay. But uh, honestly, let's jump over to the next topic, which is kind of a taboo thing recasts whoa whoa whoa! i feel like you're saying bad words this is a family friendly channel that is a huge no-no in the comic book hero statue collecting world you can't even mention the word recast without people jumping down your throat See, now over in the anime world, I feel like they are so common and prevalent. It's not a taboo word. It is a common household word that we use. Have you seen the new bootleg version, the new PVC recast version of this statue? You know, because honestly, it's so easy to replicate them. And I think that the markets that exist over there have access to the files. And so they can easily replicate them with cheaper materials. Yeah, you have a couple of cool videos on your channel where you compare the real deal to the recast and the real deal is always way better. But I'm checking out the comments and a lot of people saying they would buy the recast because it's cheaper. The thing with the recast in my community, I don't think it's that much cheaper. A lot of times they're just as expensive as regular statues. So I don't even understand the point to begin with. 
but it's really taboo. It's really like a, a form of theft and collectors don't want to support people that are profiting off of something they don't have a license for or something that they're knocking off someone else's hard work. When it comes to recasts, we really have to consider sometimes a little bit of the you know age range of the collectors as well. So some of the collectors in the anime community, you know, might be a little younger than those that might be collecting hero statues. And so what happens is the affordability and the fact that you can get some of these pieces, you know, what might be $400 and you can get a PVC knockoff for 30 40 50 dollars cheapest it's kind of a no-brainer for people who are entry-level collectors to jump on some of these pieces to really fill out their collection at first that's a really good point Bam. because i do think that our community is more made up of like 30 something year olds and not necessarily that younger demographic and speaking of the younger demographic we got to talk about the next topic which is lingo yeah, man, let's talk about that. I mean, one time we were on the phone talking and you had mentioned something about a custom statue to me. I was thinking, what the heck is a custom statue? Yeah, and I'm trying to explain to you, you know, like it's unlicensed or we call it also fan art, but basically somebody who commissioned a statue on their own is not released by a big company. Yeah, it made perfect sense what you explained it to me. For the most part, anime collectors do consider them to be unlicensed statues. And then there's the fact one day you were talking about like museum poses and I was thinking museum. And I, I call it profile poses when it's an actual profile of the character. Yeah, we mentioned that earlier with the different types of poses. Museum is like standing straight up. We definitely don't call it profile, but it's funny because we call dynamic statues the same thing, right? Yeah, dynamic is definitely one of those areas where we both kind of use the same lingo when referring to the statue. Now for my next point, I want to talk about the accuracy and creative liberties that they take in hero statues and, and also anime. Now for most hero, the way that I see it, when I look at a statue, it doesn't really bring me back to a specific moment or scene with a character. It's just an artistic interpretation of that character. Yeah, that's true. A lot of times licensed companies will take artistic liberties and kind of change a costume or change a design or a facial feature. And I think that's really why the customs emerged because people wanted scenes ripped straight out of the panels. And a lot of times the companies were kind of doing their own thing. I got to say for myself and some of my anime statues that I own, there's a few that are ripped directly from a scene or moment in the show. Could be an emotional scene or a battle scene. And some of those are my very favorite. So I don't really understand why people in the industry don't pay more attention to possibly bringing to life some of these most memorable scenes of these characters journeys. I would definitely like to see that. Give me classic comic book covers in statue form. I mean, they've done it in the past here and there, smaller scale pieces, or even like the first big statue I ever ordered, which was the Hulk versus Wolverine maquette. Um, the Prime One Studio Batman Grim Knight is also ripped from Jason Fabok artwork. So you see it, but more often than not, it's a unique interpretation by uh, an artist, a sculptor, or just by the company. Yeah, you mentioned comic book cover, but we know one statue that I would love to see created is, you know, pretty much everybody's familiar with the famous Charizard card, right? How incredible would it be if somebody came out with like a resin slab of a Charizard card, except for Charizard's not on it. He's actually popping out from in front of it. That would be an amazing concept to see come to life. Uh, but let's, for, for one of our last topics, let me just talk about, you know, customs one more time. How about the percentage of, you know, customs or unlicensed in the hero you know, area versus the anime. Yeah, we briefly mentioned customs or fan art. And with the comic collectors, there seems to be an overabundance of Wolverines, Venoms, Magnetos. They keep making the same characters over and over again. But I still think it's a small percentage compared to how many licensed companies that we have who are pumping out statues. Jem, it could not be more opposite in the anime world. I swear probably 90 to 95% of the statues that exist for anime are unlicensed or custom pieces that you know small time studios are making for the fans. <laughs> Man, I had no idea. When I see your background, I just assume that they're all licensed pieces. Yeah, man, it's crazy how our options are really super limited when it comes to the market and specific characters that are created from licensed studios. Well, hey, everybody, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I know it's very different, but I had so much fun uh, doing this with Gem Mint. I would encourage you to visit his channel and check out what he does. Yeah, on my channel, I unbox and review comic book statues, typically quarter scale, sometimes one third scale. I also read comic books and review them weekly, as well as collected editions, which are called Omnibus. Let me know in the comment section below what was your favorite topic that we talked about, and I will see you in the next video. As always, everybody, do what you love and love what you do. Bam out.